I'm getting ready to install the piston rings and then I will be able to put the pistons themselves into the jugs and then take that assembly over to the crankcase and put the pins in to connect the pistons to the connecting rods and be ready to go. I've already installed half of the clips. The advice I was given that I'll pass on to you was to install the inside one. So imagine these two, this is cylinder four, cylinder three, one, two. So this piston, this jug, it's gonna go that way. These are gonna be rather tightly close together, right? And so trying to get that pin in from this side, no bueno. So this goes in here with the piston rings like that. And then I will take the pin, slide it through from the outside, easier access. It butts up against the pin that the uh, clip that is already in there. Pop the other one in from the other side. Should be pretty straightforward. Got some uh, ultra slick assembly lube to make these things a little bit extra gooey as I install them. And uh, my ring compressor. It's a cheapie, but it should work. It's adjustable and uh, it can go actually smaller than the one, the size it's currently at, which is kind of amazing. Um, these are pretty small pistons, relatively speaking. So give them a bit of a clean. Oh, when you're installing them, so you see the arrow right there by my fingertip? That points to the front of the engine, which is the part that uh, mates up to the transmission. So everything's in alignment, jugs are ready to go, and I think I'm ready to go. Well, my work on this episode went on hiatus for a few days, three or four I think, because when I went to install these, piston rings, turns out they were the wrong size. I could not get the oil scraper to fit in that gap. Uh, the oil scraper in that set of piston rings was too big. If you look here on the back, it tells you they are two mil ring, two mil ring, five mil. What that means is that ring gap needs to be two mil, that second ring gap needs to be two mil, and then the third big one at the bottom there is supposed to be five. I thought that was my only problem. Then I started doing a little bit more dissection and I saw that it said on the top of the piston right here, let's see if I can get that in where you guys can see it, 90.43, which basically means I have a 90.5 mil bore. Measured the stroke, 69 mil. When I looked that stuff up online, being still fairly new to the engine teardown world of Volkswagen Bugs, turns out I've got a 1776 cc engine, not a 1600, or what's technically a 1584. So this whole time when I've been talking about, uh, you know, ah, I'll just do a quick refer because later on I'm gonna build this thing up to an 1800 cc for a little bit more power, I've had one all along. So it pays to know what you're doing and not to be an amateur newbie like me. So I have now learned. Uh, what I did was quick trip to Pierside Parts on uh, my lunch hour on jury duty on Monday. And I got the correct rings. Okay, so C1991.00. If you look here, they are 1.5 by 2 by 4, 90.5 mil. So these are the ones I need. These are going to work. Now I can get back started. So uh, I'm pleased. It was a delay I didn't want to have, but it's a welcome delay when you find out your engine's bigger than what you thought. You know, on these cars, that, that's usually a pretty good deal. So enough of me jabbing. I'm going to uh, get to installing these rings. This expander ring really wants to overlap where the colors are. That's kind of getting on my nerves. Oh well. Yep, just keep 
keeps wanting to roll out. So here's the problem that I'm running into. Right there you can see the red one behind, green one is overlapping. You don't want that. So I've got to get them to stay next to each other like that, right there. And the ring gap be a couple inches off uh, and again what you want is according to the instructions that gap over the ring pin okay so gap in the expander spacer here gap there so I'm going with the next gap over here for up on top okay still not overlapping we're good next one is the uh, bigger of the two to my happiness if you look it has a slight bevel in it there and it also has the word top so that's easy so those gaps are there so I'm going to drop this thing down boom last one same thing find the word top I'm going to put its gap, not quite 180 out from the other. Okay. Rings are in, still have my two colors not overlapping. They're over the piston pin. One gap there, the other one there, this one. Let's see, rotate you over there, and this one over there by itself. So, gaps are staggered, I'm ready to go. Do the rest, and then I'll uh, bring you guys back. Wrapped up the rings, so now I'm just going to flip the jugs, compress the rings, drop them in, start the wrist pins, and then uh, I will move on to getting them installed on the engine itself. Number four piston, that's the barrel, goes that way. Flat spot towards the number three. This is my number four piston. I marked it before I took it out with, uh, you see here, a few dots. So arrow points to the front of the engine that way, which is why I have the pin in on that side already because I don't want to mess around. Then, let's see. Not sure how much more I need to do there. Sorry for the wobble. Pop that out. I went in a little bit too far. There. Wrist pin is in. That one is ready to be slid on. Have the connecting rod there. Slide it in. Put the clip in. Which one doesn't look like the others? Yep, I put that one in the wrong end. 
I'm going to flip it around. Be right back. Fixed. Up next, installation. Okay, I've slipped it on. It's flush with the spring on the other side. Seated in the groove. One shim to help with compression, brass and brass. So one of the recommendations given to me was to install these cool tins rather than just the single flat sheet that goes at the bottom um, under the jugs. It just clips in like that. And then you use safety wire to wire it up. So that's what I'm gonna do. So one of the things recommended to me was to use these cool tins. These I think go to uh, type four. I think these for the square backs and they clip underneath rather than just having that single sheet here that slaps underneath. They essentially snap in place and then you safety wire them. So now I just gotta feed the safety wire up. Note that in order for this to work, the safety wire has to go around one of these studs. I have it going around this one right now. Two ends, one slightly longer, one slightly shorter after the, uh, what do you call it, accordion baffles. So you want to work it back and forth a little bit to open it up. Makes it longer so that it will then compress again. There is a seam on these, you want to point it up. Looks like that cylinder is a little bit off. It's going this way a little bit. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of massaging. Okay. 
push run, push run, push run, push run. Not even remotely torquing these yet. Just using it to slowly scooch the head on. What I'm looking at right now is this seam here and here. As this is getting pulled on, it's pulling the jug finally tight into the case. And you probably can't pick it up, but I can hear the RTV squeezing out a little bit, which is good. Just walking it around. Torqued them all down in sequence, 18 foot-pounds, forgot the assembly lube. This may not be necessary because these are essentially bathed in oil as a result of being on the bottom of the engine, but it uh, doesn't cost me much to do it. Stuff has the texture of honey. Eighteen foot pounds. Creep up on it. Give you a few close-up shots, and then I'm moving on to the other one. So there you can see the squeeze out of our TV. Might have put a little too much on there. Down here, let's get you some light. Push rod tubes in. There's the tin. Things are looking good. Onward and upward. Well, I've got a short block. I flipped the engine up onto the flywheel. It's on a wood block to keep it safe, and that flywheel is going to be replaced. Got a spare one over here. Just gives you a better look at the uh, underside of the engine in those Type 3 tins. What I'm heading for now is the oil drain area, that's usually where the oil screen goes, but because I'm running a, a remote oil filter, I'm gonna be using this aluminum piece by SCAT. Uh, you can get it with SCAT, you can get it with other names on it. It's basically a generic piece, and it comes with an oil drain plug right in the center so that you don't have to remove the whole thing to drain your oil. It's a better system by far, and uh, one should work better with my remote oil filter. After I finish this up, I'll be heading to uh, the oil system. I've got new Earl's plumbing fittings for that and for the Gene Berg piece that goes on here. Then I will pop it back into the engine dolly and replace the flywheel and uh, do some other work on the top end. So I'm going to have at it. Most of these kits come with two gaskets. 
because uh, what you're going to be doing is gasket up against the block, then you have a gasket for the strainer, then you have another gasket for the cap, and then you put the screws on and uh, you use copper washers for that. Obviously I'm not doing that, so it's going to be slightly different. And the SCAT cover comes with its own gasket. Actually it comes with two. Maybe they want me to put the oil strainer back in. I don't know that I want to do that though. And it comes with some washers. I'm going to use the big one. Those little ones look a little eh. I don't want to put the strainer in because I want to be able to drain out whatever I can. And I already have a filter going. So I think I should be good on that. These holes do go directly into the engine block, by the way, so you do want to make sure that you are uh, sealing them up effectively. Hi, Daddy. Hey, baby. I saved Bosco's bath for you. Cool. So if you want to do it, he needs it and he wants to come in the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you want me to use shampoo? Nah. What's that red stuff? It is going to help seal up. Oh, so it's kind of like glue. Yeah, kind of. The idea behind it is uh, it helps um, keep oil from leaking out of the engine. Oh. All done. Nope, didn't forget the block off plate for the oil passage. That's all good to go. Next I got to remove that and put that back on. New Earl's plumbing fitting. It is uh, 3 8 NPT-8 on the other side. This is the same thing. This one's got to get removed because it's just loose and I can't tighten it. So um, I'm going to cut it off. What I've got as a replacement is like this one. Once this is locked in, this can still swivel. I will have another one there. Boom. I can swivel it where I need it. It'll stick out, you know, quarter, maybe three-eighths of an inch more than this one. But that'll make it about even with this. I think I'll be fine. It's not going to get in the way of the pulley. So I, I'm feeling all right about it. Worst case scenario, um, I have to do it all over again, but we'll see how that goes. All clean, more RTV. this one on now it's time to take this one off it is loose if I try to tighten it it interferes with the case no good it is leaking there's a lot of gunk around it so I'm gonna basically lop the threads off right there so that what's left is this area I will be able to uh, unthread it pop on the new one everything will be ready to go so I'm gonna put you up in the stand get to it
So here you can see that the tin that goes behind the uh, crankshaft pulley has some interference. So I have to notch out right about here. Not a whole lot. This thing only has to move back maybe three eighths of an inch or so. And then I don't think I'm going to have to notch out down here. The other one was hacked to pieces. Just awful. Um, I, I just I don't think I need to go to town on it quite as much as the previous guy did. So both of these will run down underneath the left tailpipe out to the rear uh, T-bar bumper bracket where I'm going to have the remote oil filter mounted. So, all right. Preliminary marks. That looks pretty good. I think I'll just do a little bit of uh, cleanup. And I should be ready to go. I had to do a little bit of uh, massaging with my body hammer here to get the uh, pulley, crank pulley tin to fit. It was touching the um, Jean Berg cover for the oil pump. I also gave it a little bit more of a notch out here to allow the tin to sit farther back this way. So now I'm going to uh, pop the pulley on. You can see here where the pulley was scraping just a little bit because it was the tin was being pushed into it. Much more clearance now, so that's good. Lock tight on the threads. better. Might be a teeny bit of scraping, but nothing that's making the pulley have any run out. So I'm gonna be happy with it. So there you can see sort of what mine came out to look like. And here is a quick shot of the other one. Those two holes match up with bolts for the uh, Jeanberg cover. It is split up here fully. So it's got a little bit of play to it. This hole is rather large, not very straight and true, so anyway, I know I could do better than that, at least. Flywheel lock, 
12 bucks. I'm pretty sure it's going to be money well spent. Uh, if you can see, this thing is so glazed, you can actually see the pulley. See there? That's this. You can actually see it in the shiny mirror of my flywheel. So, I am going to uh, use my cheater bar here on my half inch breaker bar and see if I can pop that sucker loose. All right, this has the potential to go very, very wrong. So I'm gonna get it off of the uh, wheel stand and uh, put it on that wood block again. be a challenge. Uh-oh. Well, Can you see how much that sucker's bending? Wow. And my little compressor with my air socket gun is not gonna loosen that sucker up. So I'm gonna have to figure this out. to the flywheel. Time to rethink before I kill myself. Wow! to the flywheel. Looks like I get to buy some new tools. Round three, I did buy a new tool. I have a 26 gallon uh, one and a half horse Craftsman air compressor that gives me 150 PSI. My little uh, air tank six gallon that ran a couple of light nail guns for when I made a fence a while back. That one ran 110 PSI and it couldn't hold it for very long. So. Here's hoping that this gets the job done. Otherwise, I'm lifting the engine and taking it to a shop with a uh, much more powerful air gun. I win. Moving on.
Not sure marking the flywheel is worth doing. They say it has something to do with balancing it. This one has been drilled out here for balance. Um, these are just the clutch mounting points. So uh, I'm marking it, I'm marking the case so that when I put the new one side by side with the old one, if I can see that there are some similarities, I can then uh, mount it. Otherwise, I'm just not gonna be that terribly worried about it. All right. Big screwdrivers. Seal. Okay, so looking at the old flywheel here. It had a drill out for weight balancing there to try to make it a little bit more balanced. So in relation to my mark, which is up here, so the balanced weight removal should be somewhere in this area. So when I look at the other one, Oh, by the way, I have added the O-ring in the back. When I look at the new one, there's the extra hole for weight removal to balance it. I don't know if this makes any difference at all in what I'm doing, if it was balancing for this individual one or what, but I got nothing else to go on. So I am going to do what I can to get that balancing spot in the same spot roughly as the other one and I think I'm gonna be able to about get that right Here's my monster torque wrench. I've set it to 250. I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to get this thing to pop at 250. Um, I might pop at 250, but uh, I'm gonna do my green goblin and give it a shot. Wow. All right. Again, English professor, not mechanic. If I knew what I was doing, I'd be getting paid for it. All right, so that's clicking at 150. Let's see if I can get to, uh, here's 175. All right, okay, 200, if I can get to this, I'll be happy. Hey, okay, here's 225. Ah, can't get 225, so, let's see what I can get, 210. Two ten. 
I'm not dead and I haven't broken anything, so I'm stopping. Thanks for watching, guys.